Can't decide between the Empower and AMG. Buckle up for the ultimate showdown between the titans of the automotive world. BMW M5 versus Mercedes E63 AMG. <laughs> My name is Elvin and welcome to Accent on Cars. These two high performance machines have been battling this out for years and in today's honest and unbiased review we're gonna settle the score once and for all. No brand loyalty here. I spent months researching these cars before deciding which one to buy. If you are torn between these two legends, I analyze both cars to help you decide which one is the right car for, for you. By the end of this video you will know which car, which car is faster, which car is more reliable, which car is better overall car so you can decide for yourself. And I'll compare these cars from different angles. Reliability, performance, uh, practicality etc and will define winner in each of those categories so the one getting the most wins by the end of the video is the ultimate winner this is not gonna be a drag race I know I know before you drop off I wish I had space to drag race these cars even if I had it wouldn't have been a fair comparison because this M M5 is equipped with manual transmission making this video so much more exciting don't you worry we're gonna drive them both we're gonna compare them we're gonna rev the hell out of them before we start I'd like to shout out Alliance Motor Group in Middleton Massachusetts for lending me the M5 for the review Alliance Motor Group is a used car dealership dedicating to providing you with the ultimate automobile buying experience they have excellent reviews on Google and give them a call if you want to buy this M5 let's start with the design when the world saw the first E60 chassis BMW Many people disliked the looks of it, including diehard BMW fans, because the design language was such a departure from the 5 Series. Because it's subjective which one you like, which one you prefer for yourself, but just because the W211 was accepted well and the E60 was not so accepted well by many of the users, including BMW fans, I think Mercedes wins it in the design department, just slightly. All right, now let's talk about the engine reliability and all of that. So we'll start with the M5. Under the hood of the M5, you will find legendary S85, naturally aspirated 5 liter high driven V10, inspired by Formula One technology. Back in the day, BMW was involved with the Formula One and they wanted to project some of their motorsport routes to the regular street car. I would say this engine is a war child as it was born during horsepower wars between these two legends. Under the hood of W211 AMG, you will find M156, 6.2 liters naturally aspirated high revving V8. W211 AMG was initially equipped with 113K 5.5 supercharged engine as I said but in 2007 we got the legendary M156 one of the most beloved AMG engines ever produced this engine loves to rev all the way to 7 to 200 rpm and if you thought that was crazy then S85 revs all the way up to 8200 rpms M156 considered very reliable it has bulletproof internals bulletproof bottom end the weak point of M156 is its top end the camshafts and lifters can wear prematurely and the uh, head bolts can also be failed. The head bolt issue is, by the way, is blown out of the proportions, over exaggerated by the internet, mostly by haters, uh, but uh, issues do happen. So head bolt failure, cam adjuster failure, tappets failure and uh, cam wear are the weak points of this engine. All of those are top end related and I would say somewhat easy to DIY. I replace head bolts myself. If you haven't seen my DIY video, the link to that video is going to be down in the, in the description. Despite those known issues, many of these engines can go way past 100,000 miles. No issues. Like my engine, for example, has just over 100,000 miles on it. And knock on the wood, I do not have any of the like cam or tappet related issues. There are some cars out there closer to 200,000 miles with all original parts. Uh, this engine takes 540, depending on your climate, 5W40 oil uh, and change the oil every 3000 miles if you want your engine to purr and work like new. S85 on the other hand is considered one of the most, if not the most unreliable BMW engine ever. Unfortunately, it's, it's such a lovely engine. It revs, it sounds great, it outputs 500 horsepower. 
but the common issues are way more and way worse than in M156. Uh, so let's go through those common issues. The biggest issue and the, the most scariest are the bottom end related. For example, connecting, connecting rod bearings, crank bearing, uh, moving on to the top of the engine, vanos or variable timing uh, mechanism, high pressure fuel rail, gaskets, you name it. And frankly, I think like most of S85s develop those issues well under 100,000 miles. So there are, I would say probably no S85s that have passed 100,000 miles without having issues like that. Luckily for you on this specific engine, uh, on this specific car, all of that has been taken care of by the previous owner. The owner of this car who is selling it is actually a BMW enthusiast. He has many M5s. So initially he bought this car for himself and addressed all the issues. So vanos, uh, high pressure related, rod bearings have been replaced, all the gaskets have been replaced. So this particular engine should be good for another, I don't know, 50, 60, 70,000 miles if taken care, taken care of. Uh, for the oil it takes 1060, so even thicker oil. I would also replace it every 3,000 miles and in both of these cars do not ever floor them, do not ever drive them spiritedly before the engine has warmed up. Once it's reached the operating temperature, drive it for a little, give it 10-15 minutes more, drive it, let the whole thing, the transmi including transmission, warm up to operating temperature before you floor it. If you do that, you should be fine. So that's about the engine, now let's talk about the transmission. Most of the M5s have been equipped with automatic SMG or sequential manual gearbox, which wasn't the true manual and it wasn't the true automatic. It was this kind of like robotized manual transmission by a BMW. But like I said, luckily this one is a manual transmission, so you don't have to worry about like half of the reliability related issues when it comes to this particular car. So manual transmission, it's a manual transmission, you know, it was decent, it was reliable. The transmission found in both E55 and E63 AMG, 5G and 7G, 5-speed and 7-speed transmissions respectively, both were bulletproof. They were used in pretty much all Mercedeses of all models and they proved themselves to be as a bulletproof. They may have their own issues here and there. Uh, I have a video talking about transmission maintenance and common issues. Find that video in the, down, in the description box down below. But we can say that the transmission is bulletproof. In terms of reliability and which one is the winner, I would say M156 is the ultimate winner. Like I said, both of these engines are not perfect. They are high performing racing derived engines. And those engines usually require a lot of maintenance. But comparing the scope and the frequency of the failures, I would say M156 is the winner here. Which one sounds better is going to be up to you. And here's the exhaust clip. The design itself is going to be subjective and which one you like will depend on what you prefer. So we will instead focus on objective things, things that we can compare between the M5 and AMG to then decide which one is better. I would say both interiors age real well and both of them still look really good and really modern even today in 2024. But let's talk about BMW M5 interior at first. It's a very nice place. It's a typical BMW interior and that's a good thing. You have plenty of kind of physical controls and knobs for everything. The steering wheel is like great, you know, M Sport, M Performance steering wheel. The instrument clusters are traditional old school in BMW font and needles. It looks very sexy. This particular M4 is equipped with optional kind of like aluminum trim. I don't think AMG ever offered that, but on the flip side, AMG offered carbon fiber interior that I don't think M5 did. Both the seats of M5 and the A63 AMG are very comfortable. I want to say that the seats in the AMG, the leather in the AMG is much more softer and just like more pleasant to touch. Heated and cooled seats were uh, available. The seats in the M5 are heated but not cooled. I'm not sure if cooled seats were even an option on the M5. Let me know in the comments. I don't know. But in terms of like seat comfort, I think M5 is the winner here. Don't get me wrong, both M5 and E63 gives you plenty of options to customize and change the seating direction and every person can find a comfortable sitting position. But I think the fact that the, the top part of the back of the seat kind of like breaks in half and gets closer to your, to your neck to hold your head, 
that is something that's like an amazing feature that BMWs have. Now AMG gives you kind of like, AMG headrests kind of like extend forward, you can pull them towards your head, but that's not the same as the whole seat kind of like supporting your, your upper part of your body. Where AMG beats BMW is the practicality. Uh, when you get in the AMG, there's so much storage to put your stuff. You have larger cup holders, you have big sp uh, storage under your armrest, you have like storage under the front seats, you have many storage. Here, uh, not as much really, like the, yes, the armrest can open and there is a little bit of storage there and a little bit of storage be, be, even like down below behind that, behind that plastic thing. But that's it. I got in this interior and there is no place for me to put my phone in. There is no compartment big enough for the cell phone to go in. Now I can put them into like door pockets, but who wants to put their phone on the door pocket? M5 cup holders are very small. Even like a regular bottle like this will not fit in them. AMG also has like Alcantara headliner. Uh, M5 does not have Alcantara, it's just cloth. So that's another area in which E63 comes up on top. Now where M5 definitely beats the AMG is the infotainment. BMW was far ahead of the competition and its own time with this infotainment. Uh, this is the first generation of the iDrive. There's much more customization than in the AMG. When you get in the infotainment, there's an M Drive screen where you can adjust various performance options. By default, actually, this car is a 400 horsepower, but if you push the button, the either the M button on the steering wheel or through the menu, you can put it into a 500 horsepower mode. So the car changes the character. It gives you additional 100 horsepower, and then you can go even a 500 plus or 500 sport or mode. Uh, which, you know, changes the throttle response, throttle mapping, making the car feel even more responsive, even faster. Struts can change their damping electronically, so you can go between like Comfort, Sport 1, Sport 2. Same goes for the AMG, although in the AMG you have Airmatic, air suspension, and I think the AMG rides much better, although M5 feels a little sportier. None of these cars are track rats though, none of them are truly suitable, for a track, M3 will be faster than M5. To summarize, I think in terms of kind of like comfort of the interior, uh, use of expensive materials, E63 beats the M5, but M5 beats the E63 in infotainment and customizability. All right, let's start driving the BMW M5, legendary M5. As we said, the car can be in like 400 horsepower or 500 horsepower mode. So we're gonna leave it in the 400 horsepower mode at first. The car has a catback, Dynan Dynan exhaust, so it sounds amazing. <laughs> Man, the the, <laughs> the side bolstering, active side bolstering is so abrupt and so fast to keep you centered. Sounds amazing. Just like with all the natural aspirated engines, all the power, all the juice is after 3,000 miles, 3,000 RPM. So make sure you keep it in the right gear. Now I put it in the 500 horsepower mode and the throttle response immediately got much more sensitive. When you put it in the M mode, the heads up display switches to the RPM mode, so the RPM screen, so you get to see with how, many, how high you are revving this engine. Now this is probably the biggest advantage of this car, having the M mode over the AMG because the, the difference between the 400 horsepower and the 500 horsepower is actually pretty noticeable. In the third. I wanna say in terms of the ride quality though, this car is much harsher, much more stiffer than the AMG. So I think overall like AMG is definitely a better kind of like a car for long trips it's a better cruiser uh, than this one even in the softest setting of the suspension it can still be very stiff to my surprise though i thought this car was gonna be a lot more tail happy but it isn't it's nicely planted 
and it gives you a lot of confidence going to go fast you have to kind of like really try hard for it to make the rear end lose traction uh, and you can not saying you cannot you can definitely turn off the traction and fully turn it off and do crazy stuff but in a, in a, if, you, if you leave the traction on right now the traction for me is in the uh, M dynamic mode it's planted and it gives you a lot of confidence to go fast I mean, we can argue which car, which car is faster, but based on extensive number of YouTube videos, I think the E63 is actually just a little bit faster. But again, it's not definitive. I've seen videos where M5 destroys the E63. I've seen videos where the E63 destroys the M5. So unless I do drag race myself, it's really hard to say. As soon as you get into Mercedes AMG, you start to understand that the main difference between the E63 and the M5 is the smoothness. AMG is just like so much smoother in every department. The engine is smoother, the transmission is smoother. Now, this is obviously an automatic, we're comparing automatic to a manual, but nonetheless, the, everything is smoother, the suspension is smoother, the whole car just feels kind of like a smoother, nicer, like more refined, and that's the biggest difference. Uh, definitely, if we compare the comfort and the serenity element of the two cars, AMG is the winner here. However, that also means that AMG is less enticing to drive aggressively. You get into this car and all you want to do is just, you know, like just drive and enjoy the driving experience. It, at the moment you get into the BMW, there is something about the BMW, right, in the M5 specifically, the whole energy of the car, the atmosphere just wants you to make it upright one hand with the on, on the on the shifter and you start like looking around you want to drive like a complete maniac and that is actually you know a good thing do not misunderstand me though i'm not saying amg is not fast it's very fast and you can drive it like a complete maniac as well it's just like doesn't kind of like make you you know doesn't make you feel like you want to drive like that <laughs> Oh, that sweet exhaust. driving experience it's really hard to declare a clear winner here both cars are great in their own way when it comes to like speed and performance that one is really hard man i don't know both of these cars are plenty fast both of them like to scream both of them are naturally aspirated high revving and they both of them give you emotions like nothing else both of them will go down the history as one of the greatest cars and greatest engines produced by BMW and Mercedes, Mercedes respectively. So here you, ha you have it guys, now you know the, both the strengths and weaknesses of both car. Which one you get frankly will depend on what you value in the car. If you are a diehard BMW owner, you will choose M5 anyway. If you are a diehard die AMG owner, you will choose the AMG. But I try to be as unbiased as possible in this video, in this video highlighting strength and uh, weaknesses of both cars if you like more sportier more drive oriented car uh, definitely get the m5 just make sure you get a good maintained one or the one like this car where the common issues have been addressed and fixed by the previous owner and also don't forget to put aside like five to ten thousand grand to deal with unexpected even if you are a diy you should still put some money aside to deal with unexpected when it comes to m5 with that i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the future episodes.